In the 1940s, a train was built so massive, it changed the way America crossed mountains, the Union Pacific Big Boy. Conceived to haul 3,600 ton loads over the Wasatch, it would become the largest, most powerful steam locomotive ever run. But why did railroads gamble everything on a machine like this? And what secrets were forged inside its iron heart? The answer begins with an urgent need and an engineer's chalk-marked vision. A single chalk note on a locomotive's smoke box set the tone for what was to come. Big boy. The words scrawled by a worker at the American Locomotive Company captured both the scale and the ambition of Union Pacific's answer to a mounting crisis. By the late 1930s, the railroad faced a problem that threatened to choke the flow of freight across the West. The Wasatch Mountains, steep, relentless, and unforgiving, forced trains to crawl or demanded multiple engines working in tandem. Diesel engines were still experimental, unproven for the kind of heavy, high-speed freight Union Pacific needed. The only solution was to build a steam locomotive bigger and stronger than anything on the rails. Otto Jabelmann, Union Pacific's chief mechanical engineer, took the problem personally. His memos to ALCO's design team called for a machine that could pull a 3,600-ton train up a 1.14% grade, unassisted, and do it at speed. He insisted on a design that would not only conquer the mountains, but also silence critics who doubted Steam's future. The collaboration between Union Pacific and ALCO moved quickly. From 1940 to 1944, 25 locomotives took shape in Schenectady, each one a direct response to the demands of the mountain grades and the ambitions of the men behind the project. The big boy was not just a product of engineering, it was a wager on the future of American railroading. A locomotive of this magnitude could not exist without radical choices in structure and mechanics. The big boy's 4884 wheel arrangement became its signature. Four leading wheels to guide the engine into curves, two sets of eight driving wheels to spread the immense weight and deliver power, and a trailing four-wheel truck to support the enlarged firebox. This articulated design allowed the locomotive's front engine to pivot independently, letting the massive frame snake through the tight mountain curves that stymied lesser machines. Every axle carried a calculated load, no more than 68,000 pounds it could us, balancing the need for brute force with the limits of existing bridges and track. Union Pacific and ALCO engineers rejected compound expansion, where steam passes through high and low pressure cylinders in favor of simple expansion cylinders for all 16 driving wheels. This choice meant more straightforward maintenance and reliable power at speed, essential for the relentless grades of the Wasatch. The firebox itself grew to nearly 150 square feet, one of the largest ever mounted on rails, demanding a trailing truck robust enough to hold its weight and a stoker system capable of feeding coal at a furious pace. Each design decision, from the 68-inch drivers to the articulated frame, was a deliberate answer to the challenge of moving thousands of tons over the Rockies with a single engine. The result? A foundation strong enough to support the most ambitious steam circuit ever built. Steam begins its journey in the big boy's firebox where a mechanical stoker hurls coal onto a bed of roaring heat. Water, pulled from the tender, enters the boiler through a network of feed water heaters and circulators, rising to a pressure of 300 pounds per square inch. This pressure is not just a number, it's the force that propels the entire locomotive. Inside the boiler, seven circulators churn the water, ensuring even heat transfer and preventing dangerous hot spots. The resulting steam surges through massive pipes to four cylinders, each measuring 23.75 inches across and 32 inches deep. Here, pistons convert the raw energy of steam into motion, 
driving the 16 coupled wheels beneath the locomotive. Every revolution delivers a punch. Big Boy's cylinders generate a tractive effort of 135,375 pounds, enough to wrench thousands of tons up the steepest grades. Roller bearings on every axle reduce friction, allowing the engine to run smoother and faster than its predecessors. The entire system, from stoker to cylinder, forms a seamless circuit of energy. Coal to fire, fire to steam, steam to power, power to motion. For the crew, these numbers were more than engineering. They were the living heartbeat of a machine built to conquer mountains. The cab of a big boy in full flight was a world unto itself. At the throttle, the engineer scanned the track ahead, eyes flicking between the pressure gauges and the horizon. The fireman, sleeves rolled, fed coal by the ton, keeping the firebox roaring and the steam at a steady 300 psi. The brakeman moved with practiced efficiency, ready to respond to any sudden order. Together they commanded a machine that tipped the scales at 1.2 million pounds. More than five fully loaded 747s. On April mornings in 1943, Union Pacific's dynamometer car logged the numbers. 6,300 horsepower at the drawbar, 3,600 tons of freight behind, climbing the Wasatch at speeds that left rival engines standing still. The cab vibrated with the force of 16 pistons pounding in rhythm. Heat pressed in from the firebox, pushing temperatures above 120 degrees. Coal vanished by the shovelful, water drained by the thousand gallon. Crew diaries tell of hands blistered from the throttle, shirts soaked through, the constant roar in their ears. But when the big boy crested a summit without a helper in sight, the exhaustion faded, replaced by quiet pride. The locomotive's power was only half the story. The rest came from the skill and grit of the men who ran it, mile after relentless mile. Keeping a big boy in motion demanded more than muscle at the throttle. Every run burned through coal at a staggering rate. 10 to 12 tons per hour disappeared into the firebox while the tender's 25,000-gallon water supply drained away in less than two hours under a heavy load. The thirst and hunger of this machine shaped the entire railroad. Coaling towers and water tanks dotted the line at intervals of a hundred miles or less, each stop a carefully timed dance to avoid stranding a million-pound train on a remote grade. Crews in the yards labored around the clock, shoveling, refilling, and inspecting, always aware that a missed detail could spell disaster miles down the track. The cost of keeping Big Boy running extended far beyond fuel. Maintenance crews worked in rotating shifts, inspecting bearings, washing out boilers, and replacing worn firebox stays. A single oversight could lead to catastrophe, as reports from 1953 illustrate. That year, near Red Desert, Wyoming, a big boy left the rails after a track buckle, an incident widely cited in rail fan accounts, though no official accident report survives. The weight and speed of the locomotive damaged over 500 feet of track and a bridge, prompting the railroad to tighten inspection routines and invest in stronger infrastructure. For all its power, the big boy's appetite and the risks it carried weighed on every mile, every crew, and every ledger. By the mid-1950s, the world Big Boy was built for had changed. Diesel locomotives, once dismissed as upstarts, now promised lower fuel bills and simpler upkeep. Union Pacific's board pored over cost reports and efficiency studies. Diesel engines could run farther between refueling, needed less maintenance, and required smaller crews. The numbers were clear. One by one, the big boys were retired, their 132-foot frames pulled from the main line to sit silent in roundhouses. Seventeen of the original 25 were cut up for scrap, their steel melted down as the age of steam faded from the rails. A handful, eight in total, escaped the torch, set aside for museums in Omaha, Dallas, St. Louis, and Cheyenne, 
where they stood as relics of a vanished era. But the story didn't end in silence. In 2013, Union Pacific made a decision that stunned rail fans and engineers alike. Big Boy number 4014 would be brought back to life. Pulled from a museum in California, the locomotive was hauled to Cheyenne for a restoration that would stretch over five years. Crews faced corroded steel, missing parts, and the challenge of converting the engine from coal to oil. Some doubted it could ever run again. Yet in May 2019, 4014 thundered onto the main line, steam curling from its stack, whistle echoing across the plains. Today, it stands alone as the only operational big boy, a living bridge between the golden age of steam and a new generation of railroad dreamers. At 132 feet long and weighing 1.2 million pounds, the Union Pacific Big Boy remains the largest steam locomotive ever built, a fact confirmed by Alco production records and Union Pacific archives. The documentary traced how a single chalk note on a smoke box became the name for an engineering solution to the Wasatch grade, hauling 3,600 ton trains where no other steam engine could. From Otto Jabelman's design memos to crew accounts of 6,300 horsepower in action, each detail reveals Big Boy as a product of purpose-built innovation and post-war ambition. Yet some records, like full maintenance logs and internal accident reports, remain incomplete or unavailable for public review. Today, with restoration efforts and public displays, the Big Boy stands as evidence of a time when the limits of rail technology were pushed by necessity. Its legacy endures in preserved locomotives and the ongoing fascination documented in museum records and contemporary rail events.